Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now study the structure of a cell. Now the first time if you try to observe the structure of a cell, you can do that with the help of a microscope. You can experiment with a sample of onion peel. You just take a thin slice of onion and then try to observe it under the microscope. What do you see? You will see these kind of structures. So what are these? These are the boundaries of each cells. This is what was discovered by Robert Hooke as cell. Right? So this is the cell and here you can see some fluid like material inside. So this material is nothing but the cytoplasm and the boundaries are nothing but the cell membrane which is also known as plasma membrane because it covers the plasma or the fluid which is there inside and you would see some structures like this some dark spots like this so what are these these are nothing but the nucleus so roughly these are some of the things which you can very easily see when you observe this under a uh, microscope so now in the next few slides, we are going to talk about each of these parts in detail. Now, first we will talk about these three important things, cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. After that, we will take up other organelles like mitochondria, plastids, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies. We will discuss that later because these three are the most basic components which make up a cell. So talking about the structural organization of cell, it consists of plasma membrane which is also known as cell membrane. So I will be using these terms interchangeably. Sometimes I might call it as plasma membrane, sometimes I might call it as a cell membrane. Cell wall which is present only in plant cells. So this is an additional covering outside the plasma membrane. Nucleus, cytoplasm and then the other cell organelles. So what are there in the other cell organelles that we'll see a little later. So we will start our discussion with plasma membrane. So we are going to spend quality time trying to understand the structure, the function of plasma membrane. As I mentioned before, plasma membrane is also known as cell membrane. It is a thin, delicate, living outermost covering of cell. So it is not thick and one important thing is it is living. So it is a living layer of uh, layer which encloses the cell. So obviously since it is the outermost boundary so it ensures protection and it also serves many different functions which will be clear just in a while. It ensures protection of the cell. See anything which acts as a boundary is for protection primarily like as I mentioned before also if you have your house why do you build a boundary wall for protection so boundary will always be for protection but in addition to protection there are certain other functions also which is performed by plasma membrane when I talk about protection what does it mean it means it should allow only those particles which are good it should not allow anything which can be harmful to the cell so that means it has to select what is to be allowed and what is not to be allowed. So that is the most important function of plasma membrane. So when you look at the cell, this is your plasma membrane. This plasma membrane is a selectively permeable membrane. So what do we mean by selectively permeable? As I said before also, since it acts as the boundary, it has to ensure that only the right materials get in and the wrong materials are not allowed to enter. So this is known as selectively permeable. That means the membrane allow select, selected particles. It doesn't allow, it is not open to all the particles to enter. Only selected particles are allowed to enter. So it is very choosy or selective in that sense. So that is why it is known as a selectively permeable membrane. Now what are the objects or materials that it allows and what not that we will get to know a little later when we talk about this process of permeability. So plasma membrane, the selectively permeable membrane, how does the movement of substances take place in case of a plasma membrane? So movement of substances in and out of the cell happens by two processes, diffusion 
and what is diffusion it is gaseous exchange between cells as well as cell and its external environment so diffusion is one mode by which movement of substances happen and the other mode is osmosis so what is the difference between diffusion and osmosis when we talk about diffusion we basically talk about particles when I, when we talk of osmosis we mostly talk of water so what happens in these processes is that the movement of the substance takes place from region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration we'll talk about that a little later because we are going to talk about diffusion and osmosis separately in detail so uh, basically here what we need to know is plasma membrane will allow things by process of diffusion and osmosis so let us uh, try to see how the movement of substances take place across the cell membrane by the process of diffusion so what is diffusion it is basically movement of particles or movement of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower one so this is the main catch here diffusion always takes place from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration so what do i mean by this i mean let us suppose the gas which has to move is oxygen now wherever the concentration of oxygen is more wherever more oxygen is present that is the region of higher concentration so oxygen will start moving from the region where more oxygen is there towards the region where less oxygen is there so this movement or this process is known as diffusion so let us look at this example here suppose this is one cell and now if this there are two scenarios between what what are the two uh, medium between which this uh, movement will take place one is between the cell and the external environment and the another scenario is between two different cells now outside in the outside environment the concentration of oxygen or carbon dioxide might be different from the concentration inside right so it will flow from higher concentration to lower concentration for example let us suppose if the concentration of carbon dioxide is higher outside then it will flow from higher concentration to lower concentration that means carbon dioxide will start moving from outside into the cell similarly if there are two cells and let us suppose if the concentration of carbon dioxide is higher in this cell then carbon dioxide will start moving from this cell to this cell so this plasma membrane will allow this movement but it will not allow the movement in the vice versa direction that is why plasma membrane is a selectively permeable membrane now similarly if it is the other way around if the concentration of carbon dioxide is higher inside the cell then what will happen it will start moving out of the cell so the cell will start losing carbon dioxide to the external atmosphere and here also if the concentration is higher here it will start moving from this cell to the previous cell now let us look at the process of osmosis now the concept of osmosis and diffusion is all the same it is that osmosis talks only about movement of water so here movement of water from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration is osmosis so here also if the concentration of water is higher outside it will start moving into the cell similarly if the concentration of water in cell number 1 is more it will start moving into cell number 2 now what happens whenever water enters into a cell the cell starts swelling up it is as good as a balloon let us suppose if you have a balloon if you keep putting water inside the balloon it starts swelling up when the water if you take out water from the balloon it will start contracting so similarly is the scenario here if water moves inside a cell the cell starts swelling up and if water comes out of the cell it it reduces in volume right so this is the process of diffusion and osmosis i think it is pretty simple and clear now okay so here again the vice versa if water is more in the cell then it will start flowing out to the a region of lower concentration now we will look at the behavior of a cell with different type of solutions what do i mean by different type of solution here we will see what happens if 
the cell is put into a solution with lower concentration or with a solution with higher concentration. So let us look at the behavior with different types of solution. So here first we'll talk about a hypotonic solution. What is a hypotonic solution? A solution where the water concentration is higher than that inside the cell. Suppose you have any such solution where the high water concentration is more. That solution has a lot of water. So the water is more in the solution than inside the cell. So let us suppose this is a, a container where you have taken the hypotonic solution. Now if you put the cell into this solution, what will happen? The water concentration is more here. So water by the process of osmosis, what will happen? Water will start flowing into the cell. Now as water starts flowing into the cell, what will happen? The cell will start swelling up. If you put the cell into a hypertonic solution, so hypertonic solution is exactly the opposite of hypotonic. So here the water concentration will be less than that inside the cell. So again, you in this vessel now we have hypertonic solution. That means the water concentration is less here. So if you put a cell, what will happen now? The water concentration is less here and the concentration is more here. So water will start coming out of the cell. So the cell will start to shrink. So why am I telling all these things? Just to tell you the behavior of the cell in different solution. And this behavior is because of the property of plasma membrane. It is because of the selective permeability of plasma membrane. Because plasma membrane allows flow of particles only along specific directions. So now let us look at an isotonic solution. Isotonic solution, what is it? A solution where the water concentration is same as that inside the cell. So now in this case, the concentration of the solution and the cell is the same. So what do you think? Where will the water flow? The water will not flow at all because as per the process of osmosis, water always flows from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration. So if the concentration is same, water will not at all flow. So the cell will remain as it is. It will neither shrink nor swell. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.